Now, my whole thing about record production is if I care 51% or more about having my way, I'm going to get my way. If I care 49% or less about it getting my way, I'll let them have their way. But when I know it's really important for the project, I've got to get my way, or I shouldn't, be, I, I shouldn't have the producing job. Once again, I'm proud of my productions. You know, I, th I think I'm, my best trait is I'm probably a better producer than anything. And I, 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 singers get bugged at me because I ran them into the ground trying to get stuff really in tune. And in this era, it's auto-tune. You know, give me two passes, you can leave. I mean, I'd still want more passes because I still want to make it as organic as possible and use auto-tune as little as I have to. You know, singers don't like me because I, you know, uh, I usually recorded five or six vocal tracks and then comped them. And um, now I'm put them through, you know, I have a list. I have a lyric in front of me. And on the left side of the lyric sheet, I'd make five lines with, you know, vertical and horizontal and uh, in front of each line, track line. And I'd grade them as the singer singing it. You know, anything lower than a nine is not a keeper. So after the guy, let's say we do the verse and the B section, stop at the chorus. Because I want the sound to be the same. I don't want the sound to be different. And I'm listening, making sure if the singer moves off mic, I got to get them back and working in the right era, area. Um, I'll grade the lines. If I see I don't have a bunch of nine and a halves, I want at least two or three nine and a halves on a line so they'll butt up to another line. I mean, this is a science, it's math. You know, uh, I'm picky with my ears. I'm, I'm pitch sensitive. I want it in tune, but I want it to feel great. And I want it to phrase great. I want everything. And as a record producer, as picky as I am, that's why I, I, what I wanted. It's, you know? So anyway, I'd work singers to death. Of course, great rhythm sections. You know, of course, I'd really spend time writing the, you know, co-writing the tunes and, or finding tunes and you know, I, when I get a producing gig, I care. I dig in. How much do you care about lyrics? Um, this is an interesting question. I care more about how they sound than what they say. I care about where syllables lie in the phrase. And the syllables have to come out, have to roll off the mouth. You know, like if, if Randy writes a lyric and I go, Randy, I can't sing this line. Because this line is like a jumble, I, I can't get it out. It's got to roll. When I'm doing dummy lyrics, when we're writing a melody and I'll just sing anything that's stupid, makes no sense. A lot of times I'll tell Randy, this is a, sil a syllable here, or whoever the lyricist is, you got to get this syllable sound here. I tell you, this is what we need. I hate to say it, uh, this is not going to sound right, but a typical, another typical love song. Ah, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm bored to death over here, you know? But I mean, it serves a purpose, and I get that. And as long as the lyrics sound good and everything are great. Now, with Steely Dan, I listen to the lyrics because they're an interesting story. It's not just another love song. These are good stories. With Jar and Randy, my partner in the Jar stuff, Randy's a great lyricist for intelligent lyrics. And I never got involved with lyrics before. Maybe I have some syllables that sound good, or I come up with a title or a concept. But in the case of the Jar record, I'm coming up with concepts all over the place. Scene 29, the Noir movie, Bill Noir movies, the Cabo Cad, the Olivia Newton John boyfriend that faked his death, who's proven to be alive. Um, oh, the lawyer, the song Esquire. Randy really did a good job with the lyrics on all that stuff. So I care about the lyrics when they're intelligent and different and um, not just the common stuff.